Hey, it's Jessica Goose here with Real Agriculture at Canada's Farm Progress Show held in Regina, Saskatchewan. And joining me right now is Gary Esselink, who is the Product Marketing Specialist with Raven Industries. Gary, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you? I am doing quite well, thank you. It has been raining this week, which is something that farmers need here. Uh, but whereabouts are, are you actually based out of? Um, I'm based out of southwest uh, Minnesota and uh, northeast South Dakota. Okay. Uh, our Raven headquarters is in northeast South Dakota in Sioux Falls. In Sioux Falls, gotcha. And over there, it's a little bit of a different picture when you when you talk about crops. Say hey, it's a little too Com wet. Yes, complete opposite. Complete uh, opposite. We are. We probably have one of the uh, wettest springs on record. Oh uh, crop planting is three to four weeks behind schedule. Wow, if only we could switch. That's Somehow. right, Somebody yeah, needs to either, that, that, either that or balance it out a bit. Exactly, yeah. balance it out. But yeah. today we're talking about some really neat technology that Raven Industries has come up with. And actually, you guys won a gold award at this year's Innovation Awards at Canadian Farm Progress Show. So congratulations on that. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna talk about that right now. So what is it that Raven Industries uh, developed? Yeah, well, first of all, we wanna give our thanks to the Canadian Farm Progress Show for awarding us this award and we're truly excited uh, we tried to come out with uh, several products for f sprayers and applicators uh, in our industry uh, from Raven Applied Technology Division that's what we do uh, the product we want to talk about is AutoBoom XRT this is our we have had uh, boom height controllers which was which is what this is uh, we've been in the boom height control business for uh, 14 to 15 years uh, but this is a new innovation that we think is uh, much different and we've got a lot of new components and innovations that make it much better. Mm -hmm. I do believe that a lot of times people look at boom height control and they make the mistake of thinking, oh, it's good so it keeps my booms from running into the ground or doing damage. But actually we feel it's a much more important part is keeping boom height consistent. Because too many times if you put the booms too high, the product or the spray tends to drift off into the atmosphere and doesn't get on the product. Or if the boom is, starts uh, going down too low, you get the crop too close and you get inadequate coverage or you also burn the crop. Yeah. So consistent boom height is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that we've done to make new innovations is we have our, uh, in the most, us, Raven, and our competitors has always used what's called ultrasonic sensors. Uh, ultrasonic sensors do work well. Uh, they send a uh, message down to the ground and sends a message back. And what happens from there, uh, they, that tells the boom how high or how low it should go. One of the drawbacks of that is if you get spray mist or uh, coming from the nozzles, it would get in that cone that it sends down it, it'll uh, screw up the uh, ability for the ultrasonic sensor to work and it'll change your height of your boom and it'll be inconsistent. So what has to be done is you put the ultrasonic sensor out in front of the boom so nothing uh, can interfere with that. What we've done is come up with what's called radar sensing technology. This is a radar sensor and it's patent pending from Raven. And what we've done is we found that spray mist doesn't affect it at all. The other thing is, it's, a, it's about a three to three and a half foot range on the ultrasonic sensors. This gives us more than two meters of sensing. What this allows us to do is that when we're going over the ground and we see our uh, canopy or the, the crop, standing crop as it is, and if we hit a bare spot, it's not gonna overreact because it's got enough height uh, distance reading that it'll see that uh, bare spot and it won't over drop down or overdo it because that seems to be an issue right now. With ultrasonic sensing you can go across the field, it hits a bare spot and if the crop was probably a foot high it would drop down and then it would drop and overcompensate. So we want it to keep level all the way across and that's what we're trying to achieve. And so the nice thing about this sensor is because drift or spray doesn't get in, in its way, we can mount this right up in the framework of the boom. So it never is out in front getting a chance to get hurt or damaged. And because of the uh, sensing ability, it keeps your boom much more consistent. Yeah. So a couple other things that we add to it as well is the fact this is our controller that we put on the system, but we don't put it on the booms. A lot of times people in the past put their controller on the boom. We actually take this and put it on the side of the machine and the reason why is we have gyros in here and it can sense the machine roll as you start going through uneven terrain in the field. 
So what it's, what it's doing is sensing the roll of the chassis and sending the message back to the boom. And when it does that, it sends that message and the boom is already reacting faster than when we had ultrasonic sensors. So it becomes more of a uh, proactive, what I say, type of sensing than reactive. Yeah. So that's huge, what we feel, because it gives us quicker reaction time and allows us to be more consistent because you can feel the machine go as it, and roll as it goes. As it goes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like you've been saying here, consistency is key, and that's what I'm hearing from this. How does this, um, so it's already uh, in retail, it's already done or started production. Yes. Uh, have you been hearing anything specific from farmers when they use this? Yeah, we've had nothing but really positive uh, response to it. You know, we've... What we do, you know, we, there's all different kinds of machines out there. So you have different boom links, different ways they're folded, the booms and everything like that. So what we do is we make specific kits for each specific boom size. Yeah. And that's what we do so we can spread that out. I want to talk about one other quick feature that's really cool on this. Uh, this is used in the auto industry. Now in the center part of the boom, it's called a center rack. And it can vary from machine to machine. Some, and it's their engineering, some can be more loose so they can react better and give, give a, a more stable, uh, what they feel is more of a stable uh, reaction. Others make it more firm. So what we do is uh, provide what's called dampers. This isn't a hydraulic cylinder. It's got electronically charged, uh, uh, we see the wires on here. So we charge the material that's in here and it makes it firm. Now I'm gonna show you a good example we have. This is a, uh, you see this is material on the two syringes. Yeah. Now if we push it back and forth, not a big issue. This is the material. Now I take a magnet and we put it on here and charges it. Now we can hardly move it at all. Wow. And so that's what happens when we charge on that cylinder or that, that damper. Yeah. That's what it uses, and so that makes the center rack much more firm. So if the center part is more stable, that means the outer parts are going to stay stable as well. Exactly, and the spray is going to be consistent. That's correct. That is correct. Wow, and so in regards to Precision Egg, which is obviously something Raven is huge about, yes. uh, is this, some? would you say, somewhat of the future is what we're going to see like really start popping up in fields, not only in... Uh, in Canada, but as well as just North America. Oh, I think it's, yes, it is all over because sprayers are the world over and nobody has completely flat fields. Every, you know, there's uneven terrain. And so it's very important, we feel, is to maintain that consistent boom height control. And it becomes more of a challenge the wider the boom gets. Used to be a lot of sprayers years back were 45 feet, 60 feet wide. Now if it's a 100 foot boom, people think that's a somewhat small boom because now it's 120 foot, now it's going to 132, it's even going up to over 150 feet we're experimenting with. So things like this become more and more important as we go across the field and make to develop that consistent application as they go through the field.